Hey guys, this is Rick. I thought I would suggest a framework today for discussing and evaluating changes to code, as in pull requests to GitHub or whatever, in terms of using legislative criteria. Because, as Lawrence Lessig famously said in 1999, code is law. I'm not sure if this went into a book, but it was a common saying at the time. It was one of these memes that struck immediately. And you know, if code is law, then maybe law can be code. More specifically, if there are lessons for legislation from coding, and there certainly is, then it might follow that the reverse also has some truth to it, yeah? And specifically, let's talk about evaluating changes to code as you would evaluate changes to a law or what we call a legislative bill. Because in the past debates, in the past debates in the Bitcoin community and in several other open source communities as well, to be honest, in the past debates, we've had these terms thrown around like, this change is not necessary. And this change is too soon. And the worst of them all, this change is contentious. That's like the German Schenstopp, like boom, whoever says that word first wins and the debate is over. But you know, legislation is contentious all the time, all the time. And still, legislation happens. Contentious laws get passed. And the way they do this with the most contentious laws, with the most contentious laws, are that they evaluate laws according to three requirements. At least in the European Union, this is formalized this way. I wouldn't be surprised to see that if the US and others have a similar framework. But regardless, it's still useful. The three requirements for change like this to go through are that the law must be necessary, effective, and proportional. And these three words have very specific meanings. All three tests must pass. And looking at what they mean, starting with necessary. If a law is necessary, that means that there is a problem that needs to be addressed at all. There is a problem in the first place. The term necessary, it doesn't go into whether the fix is good or whether a fix even exists. It's just that some sort of action is necessary and this necessity is always in relation to a goal. As we were seeing with the uh, CTOR, canonical transaction ordering debate, not necessary doesn't mean we should do this later or that we are doing things in the wrong order. Not necessary means there is no problem. So if scaling is not necessary, then, oh, jolly good, everybody's already using Bitcoin across the entire planet and everybody has forgotten about fiat bank currencies. Central banks have all gone bankrupt. We're done here, we can all go home, jolly good, cheers. This is what not necessary means. It means no action is required of any kind in relation to our goal, as in we're already green across the board, there's nothing more to do. And if we're at our goal already, that, that's when we're hitting not necessary. So conversely to this, necessary simply means we're not at our goal, we're not where we want to be. We're not where we want to be. So in the Bitcoin sphere, everything will be necessary as it pertains to scaling, as it pertains to usability. We have a long way to go. We have a long way to go. But necessary is in relation to a goal. Just throwing out not necessary there doesn't mean a lot by itself. Moving on, the second term, effective. Effective simply means that the suggested fix helps to fix the identified problem. 
it moves toward the goal in the general direction of the goal. It doesn't mean that we're passing the bar, it means that we're getting closer to the bar. It does not mean that this is the best fix conceivable and we should wait for another three years to evaluate if this is the best fix we can get. It does not mean that we're without consequences, that comes in a later step, or without undesirable consequences to be precise. It does not mean that this fixes the entire problem conceivably, but it is a step in the right direction. If our goal is to be worldwide money, then we need to have the ability to be worldwide, worldwide money at scale. And so we need to be able to scale to that level. Last but not least, proportionate. This means that the side effects of the fix are not worse than the fix itself. For example, if you're looking at mass surveillance legislation, then it's easy to say that it's necessary because crime exists in society. It's necessary, it's easy to say that it's effective because it helps catching criminals, but it's not proportionate because the damage it causes to society is worse than the damage it fixes. At least that's my take on it. Regrettably, the politicians in charge usually have a different idea of proportionality in mass surveillance. But in terms of code, most of the time, changes to code will not fail here. They will not introduce changes that are worse than the fix itself. There are exceptions, of course, notably when security bugs are introduced, like the bug in the Bitcoin core, where there was an optimization that gained 600 milliseconds in validation of a block, but as a price for the, these 600 milliseconds saved every 10 minutes, it introduced a unbounded money creation by miners, which is obviously unacceptable. And this was a pretty big deal back in, I think maybe six months ago, a couple of months back anyway. This is an example of when the fix is not proportionate. But most changes to code will frankly fix all these three criteria. Even so, these three criteria will be helpful in articulating what your opposition is to a change. When you're just throwing out, it's not necessary, then you're saying that we're at our goal already. And that's just voicing very diffuse concerns that create this kind of unrest as in what are, what's your issue exactly here? Do you want to do things in different order? Do you think this doesn't help with scaling? Do you think there's not a scaling problem? So going by these three criteria really helps articulate the precise opposition to change. But then, as I said, that most code changes, frankly, will pass all three, the, all three of these criteria. So how do you proceed when there are multiple changes suggested and they all pass all these three. Well, this is where, frankly, my military experience comes in. And you're going to pick one and you're going to pick any one and you're going to run like hell with it. This is something that's hammered into all military officers in officers' school. And it's not really that prevalent in open source. And that is that it's often far worse, far worse to do nothing having analysis paralysis than to start walking in the completely wrong direction. Doing nothing, most of the time, it'll be your very worst option. So in summary, when evaluating changes to code going forward, and if you're voicing opposition in particular, if you're using the three keywords, necessary, effective, and proportional, I believe we can have a more constructive debate.